Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Donnie Most. We head to California for this week's show, and I'm joined by actor, singer, director, Donnie Most, best known for his role as Ralph in the long-running television series, Happy Days, starring alongside Henry Winkler and Ron Howard. Donnie is now an established director in Hollywood and is directing feature films. His first, The Last Best Sunday, had a world premiere at the Seattle International Film Festival. Moolah premiered at the Newport Beach Film Festival, where it earned Most Outstanding Achievement in Directing Award. And then there is his first love, singing. Donnie has always loved the swing, big band style of music and has put his show together titled Donnie Most, Mostly Swinging. He has performed across the US to standing ovations at venues such as the Cutting Room in New York City and Vitello's Jazz Club in Los Angeles. Let's meet the multi-talented Donnie Most on Late Night with Monica Price. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy you with me tonight on my show. Well, thank you, Monica. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's just great. Actor, singer, director. We've got so much to talk about tonight. So, you know, I want to start, of course, we have to start, I think, with Happy Days. Now, I remember you in Happy Days, Ralph, of course, playing Ralph, with your mop of uh, ginger hair. And, and I remember you so well. Always had a smile on your face. <laughs> yeah, the, it was fun playing that character. Um, um, it was, he was, Ralph was not I should say I was different than Ralph in in, in many ways. Yeah. Um, I mean, once in a while I I smile too, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but for the most part, you know, I was never the class clown and the the guy who wanted to crack everybody up and you know be the be the comedian in the group. Yeah. I was not. I was always sort of the the straight man for my friends. You know, I was yeah. their audience. So um, but but like I did know people like that and. Uh, so it was fun to, to, to draw upon other characters that I knew and use that to, pl to create something that's different than me. Yeah. I, prefer, I almost prefer, you know, I like playing all different kinds of characters. That's the challenge and, and the fun. And that's the wonderful thing about acting, isn't it? Because you can do that. You know, you, yeah. have, you have that ability to just draw. At what age were you when you went into Happy Days, Don? Um, I, I was, I just turned 20 when I landed the role, you know, right. a few months after I turned 20. Yeah. But I'd been pursuing acting and singing from the time I was pretty young. Um, I started go. I grew up in New York City, well, in Brooklyn, New York. And then I, I started going to a school in, in the city, in Manhattan, when I was about 13, um, you know, on weekends, like Saturday, not, yes. not regular. And I would go there for singing and acting and dancing. And, um, and, and then by the time I was a year later, I got picked from that from the school to be part of a nightclub review of, of seven teenagers, 14 to 16 years old, uh, that they created a, a nightclub act and and they would get them booked. And I got picked to be in it. So th during the summer, uh, after I turned, I was just turning 15, uh, almost 15, and I was performing with this act up in in a resort area upstate New York, the Catskill Mountains. It was a very well-known uh, resort area where they had hotels and the nightclubs within the hotels. So I spent the summer singing up there that, that year and it was great experience and fun. So, so like, and then it was not till five years later that I got happy days because after that summer, I started shifting my focus in, more seriously towards acting. And, and, I, and I joined a, an acting class, a workshop that was much more focused on that, not the singing and the dancing so much, yeah. um, or at all. It was just primarily acting. And, yeah. and I really put the music aside, knowing that one day I'd come back to it. Um, and I did during the years of doing some musical theater and some singing, but, but I knew one day I'd want to do my own act with all the great standards, the jazz standards and the great American songbook, all those classics. And, um, but it, you know, I'm jumping ahead. I no. don't do that. Till, I Go ahead and jump. Till. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that was six, seven years ago when I decided to go back and, and bring the music back into the, 
into the mix. So when but, you say um, that your singing is, was your first love, it really was your first love by the sounds of it. Yeah, it was. It was my first love. And I mean, I liked acting initially, but I was really focused. I loved listening to all those guys, you know, the S Sinatra and, and, and Nat King Cole and some of the great jazz singers, Ella Fitzgerald and Joe Williams and, 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 and then Dino, of course. And then I was a big Bobby Darren fan who could do that kind of music as good as all of them. And um, I saw Bobby at the Copacabana nightclub in New York when I was 18. Yes. Oh, so wow. It left a huge impression on me. And um, so I loved listening to those guys and then started singing along with them. And, um, and now, you know, we can get to this later, but now I'm doing it again and, you know, doing it in clubs and theaters and doing CDs and all that sort of stuff. But right. back then I was just 20. Just um, 20 years old. And how long and, did you stay in Happy Days for? How many years were you there? Um, I was on for set. I, I was on the first seven seasons. The show ran 11 seasons. But um, after that seventh year, um, Ron Howard and myself are, you know, we decided for various reasons, um, our contract was up and, you know, they, they, they wanted us to come back again, but um, we decided to move on. Ron had this, this crazy idea that he could be a director, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so, you know, he went off. It's never got him anywhere. I don't know why he's done that. <laughs> I know whatever happened to the guy. So, so he, that's one of the reasons he, he was pursuing that. And I, yeah. I felt I needed, I, you know, I didn't want to just, as I was mentioning before, I like playing a lot of different characters. Yeah. I wanted to have a career that had longevity as an actor. And I'd been playing one character for seven years. And, and I knew that I was going to start getting, I was already getting associated with that role and, and it would be hard to break away from it. So I felt like I better start now. You know, it's time to. Yeah, I can understand though because it's kind of a uh, it's a double edged sword, isn't it? Because in one in one way, you, it's fantastic. You're part of something that was so huge in those days. And right. I said, I remember you being in every series. You know, I, do, I I wasn't aware that you weren't in any. That's how often I remember seeing you in it. And right. then you know you, but then that decision to leave, you know, from a financial point of view, from you know, just oh my goodness me, what am I going to do? Point of view. So actually, that was quite a brave decision to. To, um, to take that kind of leap and, and really pursue your dreams, Don? Yeah, I guess it was. Some people probably thought it was stupid. You know? yeah. um, <laughs> we, we'll ignore we, those people. We don't want to talk to those people. <laughs> right. Um, you know, I was 27, so I, you know, and I felt like, <clears throat> you know, I had, had all the success. And it, you're right, it was very difficult because it, it was such a huge hit. And I loved working with the people that I was, working with and that was the hardest part of leaving I was you know stepping away from that working relationship with everybody not only the actors but the director and and you know Jerry Paris and, and Gary Marshall is our exec producer yeah. um, and the incredible cast so that was the hardest part but I was 27 and I felt like you know I really need to to do this and it was difficult when I you know I told my agent I told my agent I don't want to do another series right now. I don't want to do television. I want to try to do just film and theater. And back then it was very difficult to go from television yeah. to film, mm -hmm. um, especially a sitcom. T today it's different. You know, now there's like a bridge between the mediums. People do, who do movies mm -hmm. are doing TV and they're yes. doing TV and they're doing movies. But back then it was like a stigma, you know, television, yeah. film was separate. Mm -hmm. So it was hard. And, but I told my agent, I don't want to do, another series right now, I, I, I'm going to just try to do film. And I went six months, I couldn't even get a, an audition for a movie, you know, they wouldn't even let me come in and, and read because, you know, they say, oh, no, he's the guy from Happy Days, you know, and so it, it was like hitting a brick wall, you know. Um, but I just kept plugging away, plugging away, I did theater. And then I eventually told my agent, well, you know, maybe I'll do a little, let's start doing some TV, because mm -hmm. I, because I, didn't know what else because I couldn't get, you know, interviews or even a chance to try out for movies. So, um, so, you know, I started plugging away and doing a part here that was a little different and a part here that was a little different. And then that opened it up for me. Somebody else thought of me for this. And, yeah. you know, so it, it took a while, but I 
built it up and and then I started getting some independent film work, which was really good. And then I got to do some th things that were vastly different. And then other people saw that. So, you know, it's been building. And especially in the last five to 10 years, it's opened up a lot more. And I think that's because I'm now at a different age bracket um, where it's clearly different. And, you know, now I'm getting cast as the dad or, yeah. you know, or, <laughs> You know, maybe a grandfather or something. So, or <laughs> so there's, a good, there's some good to that, and the bad, the bad side to that. You think, oh dear, I'm getting yeah, older. <laughs> some good things about getting older right now yeah. for me. Yeah. So, so I've done two films in the last year and a half that were really good. You know, parts that I could. Oh, tell me about those. Tell us about those. Okay, so um, the most recent one is called Lost Heart, and right. um, I, I play. It's it's a really lovely film. It's a comedy drama with mystery and a lot of it's a real heartwarming film too and um I play a small town pastor and a uh, very different kind of character different energy completely and it was really a challenge but a, but a great script and and it came out really well and that can be seen on um it's on Amazon Prime now brilliant and we can see that then in here in the UK I hope so yeah yes. I hope so and then with the same production company based out of Michigan, I did a film prior to that a year earlier called MBF, also known as Man's Best Friend. And um, it's a very dramatic film. I, I play a defense attorney uh, uh, where I'm representing a wounded vet. And it's very heavy, but I have some great courtroom scenes, you know, and again, different. Very, so people, and that's on Amazon Prime too. So, um, and I was really starting to build up some momentum. And then, of course, COVID hit. Yeah. COVID hit. Yeah. The pandemic yeah. hit and it's all come to a crashing stop. But it was interesting you were saying, though, Don, because the, the, the industry is very different. Just as you were saying, you know, there's, there was back then there was a time where if you were in sitcom, it was just sitcom. If you were in the film, it was just film. Now we see big, you know, AIDS. A-listers go from being major, major, major movies in Hollywood, and then we'll see them on Netflix doing something right. or, you know, so that wasn't there before. So do you think that's opened up opportunities, though, for you? I think so. I, I, I think it's a more, a little bit more of a level playing field now so that there isn't that distinction. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I was supposed to do another movie that got postponed um, but I'm, I think it's going to happen in April and I'm going to Prague to do it. And, oh, I'm fantastic. And, and then I just got cast. I just found out in, um, in a movie for a cable channel here called Lifetime. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to do that next month. So oh, fantastic. Can you tell us the name of the movie or is it under wraps? Um, no, I, th oh, you know what? They haven't, it's a holiday movie, but they haven't oh, released it yet, but it's ah. a nice holiday film. And I have a fun role in it. So, right. um, yeah, it's opening. I think it is opening things up so that, yeah. you know, if there's a part that I'm really right for, it doesn't matter whether it's a movie or if it's a TV show. It doesn't matter if, if you're the right, if you're in the sort of in the vein of what they're looking for for the character and mm -hmm. and they like what you, you know, I still sometimes I'll get it like for these Michigan the company that I work for. Yes. Michigan, they just made me the offers for the for the films because based on the work they knew that yes. I could do. Yeah. But then there are other ones where I still have to audition, like this Lifetime movie. Yeah. I had to do a, a self tape audition from my. I was going to say, did you do it? Do you, do you do it kind of on this? You know, through yeah. through the technology. Yeah, well, on my phone and yeah. you know, videotaped it and then sent it in, and so I had to audition and but but you know I got this and. Um, so it depends. It just depends yeah. on what it is and what they know of you. So, you know, that's why the more I do it, then, it, you know, hopefully it's more and more the offers and I don't have to yeah. do the auditions because um, I don't love doing those. Um, I, can't, I can't imagine any actor likes auditioning. It doesn't matter how many times they've done it. It must be quite nerve wracking to do an audition. Yeah. And I mean, when I was younger, I, I was, it, it was easier for me. I didn't, you know, I don't know. I almost did. I, I don't know if I enjoyed it, but I didn't mind it as much. Now I'm at, a, you know, it's, it's like, oh, God, I have to audition. OK, yeah. 
okay, <laughs> you know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Just give me the part. I'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's, but then, but it's, guess, so, it's so good, though, that you're, I mean, and you clearly still love the acting because I can hear the passion in your voice, which which is fantastic. Oh, and, and I mean, when you, when you, you know, you, you suddenly kind of moved from that, didn't you? What, at what point did you suddenly think, actually, I'd really like to get behind the camera, like your okay. co-star, of course, on Howard, which is he's come, he's moved on to be, you know, a fantastic director. What, at what point did you find that that's what you wanted to do too? I, I, it kind of came about during a period when I was very frustrated uh, with not getting the opportunities for the acting roles. Mm. Uh, so it was about in the, somewhere in the nineties. Yes. I had done a play on the East coast uh, uh, just outside of New York city. And um and then when I, I met a, a guy who was running a, a small theater in Los Angeles. And he said to me, you know, if you ever have a, a something you want to bring here to, to direct, um, you know, let's talk. I'm open to that. And I was, oh, you know, and I knew I'd want to direct at some point, but I always thought it would be a little bit later. But I was so I wasn't getting the kinds of roles that I wanted. So I said, well, let me try this. You know, let's yeah. and I and the play that I had just acted in, I thought would be perfect for the space of this theater. Um, Cause it was a small theater and the play took place entirely in a men's locker room of a tennis club. So I thought, oh, this it's oh, intimate. Great. It's, perfect. Yeah. It's, perfect. it's perfect. So um, he, he loved the idea and, and I, I wound up, uh oh, <laughs> sun just changed or something. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry. We're, we're, we're live from California. What? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, let's see if we could, uh, that's it. Here, here that's go. better. That's better. <laughs> that California sunshine's coming straight through your window. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, so I I did the play and it went great, you know, and I enjoyed it very much and it got great reviews and yeah. so I said, oh okay, I'm going to do some more and I did more theater and then it led to the point where I said, you know, I I'm I'd love to now because I've had experience working on a lot of film projects, TV and. Uh, let me find the project that I can direct for the, for the film and um, see if I can find a way to get it made. And, and I met a direct, uh, I met a producer through somebody who, who had a lot of experience and liked working with first time directors. And, um, and then I found a script, um, a wonderful writer, her name was Karen Kelly. And there were two scripts and we decided to, to try to get the one that was a little less expensive to make. So it'd be easier to raise the money. Yes, of course. And, um, and, and we were able to do it. And, you know, I had worked with a lot of good directors. So I, I had all that sort of, you know, by, by yes. assimilation, you assimilate all that, you know. Yeah. Uh, did, it, did it come naturally to you, Don? Yeah, it really did. It, you know, and people have said to me, you're going to be surprised at how much you know a lot more than you think you do. And, and that's what happened because, well, you know, I had worked with, Ron Howard came to me um, in the third season of Happy Days. And he, when he wanted to show, prove that he could be a director, he yeah. asked me if I'd be interested in doing a movie with him, an experimental film that I would play the lead and to develop the story with him and, you know, just work. Yes. And, and we did. And we, we were shooting it on weekends and we got about, so I was working with Ron directing me before he was, a you know, the big director. Yeah. And, and then I did my first movie that I acted in it was a film called Crazy Mama that was directed by Jonathan Demme, who went on to direct Silence of the Lambs and oh. Philadelphia and, yes. and won Academy Awards. So my, I had really great training ground and, and Gary Marshall, you know, you know, all these people. So a lot of it did come naturally. And I always was into photography. So I was into composition and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And so it was like a really great melding for me of working with actors and trying to get the scenes to be great. And then also to make it, you know, pop and look right cinematically. Yes. And so I, it did kind of, I think it did come naturally. I mean, there were certain things on certain technical ends that I was oblivious to, but I, you know, relied on uh, the crew for that. I yes, didn't I was going to say other people can other other people can do that. So, what was the first film that you directed on? What was it called? It was called The Last Best Sunday, and it was a really uh, pretty dramatic, very dramatic piece. 
about two teenagers, a uh, boy and a girl who would normally have nothing to do with each other under normal circumstances. She's, it's a, it's a little a rural town in central California where there's still, uh, you know, some, some sort of, you know, racism towards the, in this one town towards yes. Hispanics. And um, so the two leads, it was a Hispanic boy who was the son of migrant farm workers and, and a girl, a white girl who was raised by very religious parents. And they would normally have nothing to do with yeah. each other, but something very, you know, something happens to the guy early on, and I won't say what, that creates, uh, he's on the run and he, yeah. and he winds up in this house hiding and it's the house that she's been left alone for the weekend. And, and initially- Great story, I'm intrigued already. I want to go and see it. Yeah, it's, it's really a great story. And so initially it becomes like a hostage thing because he's on the run and he's, he's also bleeding from a wound and, and, and she's alone because her parents had left her uh, for, it's, anyway, they went on a religious retreat. She yeah. was alone for the weekend. So there they are together. And it's like a hostage situation at the beginning, but it's slowly things like an onion peeling, you know, it starts to, uh, layers open up between them and a relationship gradually builds and it gets to a point where then they're like you know uh, falling in love with each other and then they're going to run off to get you know it's, yes. it's it's a really cool uh, that sounds like a really cool movie I have to say yeah, yeah it's it, it that's on there's a there's um it's coming out on more platforms right now it's on a platform form called Tubi okay so if people can get that they can see that Okay. Um, yes. That, that, the, the, that, next, the next one I did was a comedy uh, drama, comedy, yeah, comedy drama called Moolah, and uh, you know that very funny, but then it gets kind of a little dramatic and and fulfilling too. Um, based on a true story that I I I created, I wrote the story with um, the executive producer who 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 had these real experiences that I was very familiar with, and we developed it. Then I brought in a writer that I had worked with, and um, and it came out great with a great cast. Um, some people that uh, you know, people will recognize most of these actors. They're yes. um, they're not like a list act. Although the girl who was thirteen at the time was playing a supporting role, the daughter of our lead, her yeah. name is Shale Shailene Woodley. She was her first film, and she's getting very big here. She mm -hmm. was. Um, she was in a movie. She's been in the movie uh, Divergent series mm -hmm. and then uh, The Fault in Our Stars and The Spectacular Now. And then she was in a big mini series here, Pretty Little Liars or something with Reese yes. Witherspoon yeah. and Nicole Kidman. Yeah. yeah. So, and, but, but also Daniel Baldwin's in the movie. Right. And, and Curtis Armstrong and um, uh, Willie May Pother is the lead and uh, some other great actors. It must um, be so. It must be so good, Don, because obviously you've been in the acting world, so you've you've been on that side of the fence. So it must be so lovely to, as a director, to be able to support the actors and kind of understand their anxieties and you know, and just the way that the movie works. That you understand how the actors thinking because you've been in that position yourself. So I think that's that's why um, you know somebody who's been an actor can go on quite successfully to be a director. Yeah, I think that it is a good sort of a launching point yeah. for an actor to do that. Uh, he's yeah. got a lot of, you know, working the, the talking their language with yes. the other actors, and uh, yeah, as you said, understanding, being sensitive to to the 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 challenges that they face yeah. and. And there's, a of, there's a lot of time on set, isn't there? You know, people think acting, you know, you, you're just acting all the time. But there's a lot of time when you're just sitting in your trailer doing yeah. nothing for hours and hours on end. That's yeah, the bit is, that people don't realise. Yeah, there is a lot of that, the waiting around. Yeah, um, yeah. That could be tough. But, but, yeah, it definitely was helpful for me. Yeah. Um, as a, What I know as an actor to bring to that. And then if you have good people around you to capture, to capture it properly. Yes. Then, then that's that's the key. And it's uh, great that it's great that you're still obviously in contact with Ron. Are you still in contact with anybody else from the Happy Days crew? Yes, um, I speak to Anson Williams, who played Potsy. Oh, yeah, you know, like every week, and we see each other when we can a lot. 
That's um, great. We're like best friends, you know. Um, we're probably even a bit closer now than we were back then. Um, and and I, I'll stay in touch with, with Henry. You know, we email each other yes. yeah. once in a while, have lunch, that kind of thing. And Mary and Ross. Nice yeah, it's a good good family. I mean, yeah. It always appeared like a good family unit, even though I know you were acting, but it always looked like you really genuinely got on with each other. Yeah, that's true. And I think that had, uh, you know, was a factor in, in the success because, yes. yes, we were all, you know, taking the work seriously and there were a lot of talented people. But the fact that we got along so well and had great chemistry definitely yeah. helped. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So the direct, as far as directing is concerned, what are you actually doing now, Don? Are you directing something at this moment? No, no not right now. Although I have several projects that sort of bubbling away, yeah, bubbling that yeah. That, I'm, that I will hopefully be able to get going, and that I'll, and two of them I would be directing. Um, the others I'm not sure we'd yeah. see, but two the ideas for me to direct. And there's some interest, and in people are talking, but you know it. it, it you never know. It could, yes. it still could it's take a, a while. It's a very, it's a very unstable world, isn't it? Really, acting. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you know, you can be an actor for many years and and do nothing, and then suddenly you'll go into some one particular role, and then boom, you know, you, you're just kind of catapulted um, yeah. if it's, if it's a success. So, it, yeah. but you know, I, you you've been years in the business, so you understand that. Which again, which will probably make you a very sympathetic director because you understand how sometimes for some actors you know, getting just one acting role is, is their bread and butter. You know, it's, it's yeah. especially at the moment with the pandemic, because we've yeah. definitely been hit in the UK and I can't imagine that it's not the same in the U S with the yeah. movie industry. It's just come to a complete stop. Um, you know, so what, what are they doing filming wise in Hollywood at the moment, Don? Are they, is it, is it films being made or is it all just on hold at the moment? Yeah, there, there are things, there are um, projects that are filming mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Um, for a while, they, I was hearing it was about, you know, 30, 40 percent of what normal of what normal production would be. Yeah. But I think it's picking up. I think it's probably over 50 percent now, yeah. of, you know, maybe 60 percent. And like I mentioned, I'm going to be doing one next month. Um, so, you know, it's they're, they're taking a lot of precaution and going through all the protocols that they have yes. to do. Yeah. And it's a lot. And it adds problem is it adds um, to the budget of a film uh, of for a while they were saying it was adding about 30 percent so you know it was that's why a lot of the films couldn't and productions couldn't go on because it was making it too expensive they didn't have they weren't budgeted for it so um but it's you know, always I, about the budget isn't it with a film it's always about the budget you know yeah but, but let's yeah. move on to your your lovely singing your first love your singing career now you've just about to release single ooh baby is it is it out now? When does it come out, Don? Uh, the, the 12th of March. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's it's out. So it's been out. It, we've got it. It's good. So yeah. how is it going? Well, the response that I'm, I, I've am i been hearing is great. You know, everybody who I've, I've had other interviews and, and, and people are saying that they love the song and they were very sort of pleasantly surprised and, and didn't expect it from me and and that they were getting great response from you yeah. because they, they weren't playing it, it hadn't been officially released yet but they were starting to play it like preview it a little bit and they said that people were loving it so um I'm that's excited. great isn't it that must be very exciting for you because I've heard it and it is it's very good it's very bluesy jazzy swing it's that you know it's that all the things that you love really um yeah, so this, you know obviously that was important to you yeah this particular song that we released is not as much it's a little different from, I had a CD that was released about three years ago, three years ago called uh, Mostly Swinging, the most yeah. mostly swinging with a great big band and, you know, all those jazz standards and it, and it's mostly, sw and it swings. Yes. This one, this it's one. It's more we, romantic, isn't it, this one? It's a bit, it's a bit more love, well, like a love yeah, song, really. Yeah, yeah, this particular song was originally done by Smokey Robinson. It was a Mo Motown feel, you know, originally. Yeah. So ours is not quite the same feel, but it's like you said, it's kind of bluesy and a little bit of R and B and blues. Mm, yes. Um, so it's a little different than, but but some of the other songs from the new CD are going to be jazz standards, but just not with a big band, more of a oh. contemporary jazz uh, uh, setting. You know, like five pieces and maybe a 
a trumpet might be there or a saxophone. So <clears throat> a little different feel from the swing. Yeah. Um, although there's a couple in there that will swing too. Yeah. So it's a nice, nice blend. Some We've decided to just integrate some songs from the 60s and 70s That's as lovely. well as the jazz. And what's so, that album? What's the album called, John? What's it going to be called? I, I don't. You know, we haven't finished the actual album yet, so oh. we haven't we haven't named it because um, oh. we, we were almost done last year, yeah. and then we got stuck with with the yeah. COVID, and we had to stop. Yeah. So yeah. I'm waiting. We're hoping in May, the producer Tony Mantor, who's based in Nashville. Yeah. Um, he, I just talked to him, and he's thinking that probably in May we'd be able to get back in the studio and. Oh, that would be great. Get the last four done and then get so, the whole thing. And then get the whole thing done. Early. Yeah. So is it being produced in Nashville? Is that where, yeah. is that where the production's taking place? Yeah, that yeah. that one, because um, somebody introduced me to Tony and he's based in, in that area and there's yeah. great musicians there. Oh, great musicians in Nashville. That's the place yeah. to go, isn't it? If yeah. I had to say, if I had to ask you, um, Don, which one would you pick? If you had to pick just one of the things that you do mm -hmm. and you obviously you clearly love, director, actor singer what's your first initial thought which one? Oh god you know people ask me this and it's it's so hard yeah. it's so hard what's the I first one that springs to mind oh god i'd probably say right now what i want to do i guess for what i really want to do let's say over the next next five years you yes. know if I, what yeah. i would really want to i'd probably say the acting um really? I, I probably would if it's the right parts. You mm. see, that's the thing. If it's the right parts and the right thing. Otherwise, if it's not, then it would be singing. Yes. Because, yeah. because in singing, you're picking the material. Yes. You know, in acting, you're not always picking the material. So, um, you know, you might take a part and it might be pretty good, but not, you know, not like you, oh my God, this is like, the, you know, I love yeah. the script. Sometimes you take parts that, you know, uh, might not, they can't all be that. There's, That's right. a, there's a handful of actors that can yeah. just pick only the greatest parts, you know, like, you know, they turn down 95% and only pick, there's a handful of actors that are in that position, you know? So you, you take work sometimes for all various reasons. Yes. But so if it's apples to apples, you know, if it was taking, uh, getting a great part in a film or TV show, Versus singing, that's a toss up. But, yeah. but um, that's a toss up. But right now, I feel like if I can get the right parts, I, I'd yeah. like to. There's a lot more acting I want to do, and the singing, you know, I'll do that too. But I, yeah. I just feel like I've only hit the the You've tip got of the it. Yeah. Oh. You know? Well, Don, it's been so fantastic to talk to you tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you. So, so nice to be with you. And, and it really is. It's been so lovely. I could continue talking to you for hours. You're going to have to come back on the show. I would love to. That would be really good. When your album, perhaps when your album's, you know, being released, um, you know, come yeah. back on the show and, and tell us all about it. Yeah, because uh, and we're talking about maybe trying to see if we can set up a tour. So oh, maybe... yes. Fantastic. Come to the UK and then you can come to the studio. That would be wonderful. I would love that. Oh, that's love... great. Thank you so much, Don. Thank you. Too. Thank right, you that's it for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me and come back and join me next week. But take care for now. Donna take care. Bye bye. Most. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why it's almost like me. And from the way that I feel, when that bell start to feel, I could swear I was falling. I could swear. Every day, every day I have the blues Every day, every day I have the blues